My name is Caitlin Page. I am a songwriter, musician, worshiper, singer, creative person. If you haven't met me before or been on my YouTube channel at all, I like to make videos about music, about my life, about school, about work, and the things that I'm learning and doing and everything that's on my mind. Today, I'm going to be talking about five steps to successful songwriting. And the reason why I wanted to make this video is because recently I was inspired to start making the kind of videos that my 16 year old self would have really benefited from watching. I hope that this can encourage any young musicians or songwriters out there that have a lot of big dreams but have no idea where to start and really get you started along the path of creating things that you'll be proud of and that will be really fulfilling to you. So the first tip that I want to talk about in our five steps to successful songwriting is knowing where to start or song starts. So I actually was introduced to the concept of a song start probably a couple years ago at a songwriting retreat. A song start could be anything from a lyric idea, a general emotion or concept, a chord progression, a melody, a rhythm, or even just a simple thought. You're like, oh, I want to write a song about this. Like, this thing in nature and how it compares to this thing in real life, or I want to write a song about dealing with mental health, I want to write a song about this passage in scripture, or this quote from a book that I saw that I liked. It could really be anything in the world. Simply just having an idea and taking the time to be disciplined to write down your ideas. Anywhere that you keep track of things, whether that's your phone, whether that's your journal, um, making lists on a sheet of paper or a sticky note. For me, it is the notes app on my phone, as well as the voice memos app. And I use this app called Notion. I just have the free version. That's really great for organizational everyday scheduling and planning and that type of thing. I keep most of my song starts in my voice memos and in my notes app. So the second tip for successful songwriting is knowing how to write good lyrics. And how do you even know if something is a good lyric or not? What I like to do, and I am constantly exercising this muscle, I like to study a lot. I like to read books about songwriting. I'm currently in school in a songwriting and composition program for college for my bachelor's degree. I have done like when I was 16 and I really started to get into songwriting and wanting to make it really good and deciding that this was something I wanted to do with my life. I started taking online courses and I actually found a free course through Coursera that was a songwriting course from Berkeley Online. And that's what made me want to go to Berkeley for college. And it's amazing, almost 10 years later, I'm actually fulfilling that dream. Really just look for any resources around you to grow and better yourself. But I would also say that for me, my standards for a good lyric are something that's important to you, something that's meaningful to you, something that you have knowledge about, and something that's going to capture someone's attention. And ways that I would go about accomplishing making a good lyric according to those standards would be avoiding cliches, having good grammar, making sure that your ideas are cohesive and well-connected throughout the sections of your song, and to the best of your ability, striving to produce originality, create something that you've never heard before that excites you and gets your imagination flowing. Make the kind of things that you would enjoy consuming. All right, so the third step to successful songwriting is knowing how to create a good melody. Here's how I would go about that. I would really just listen to a ton of music that you like. For me, some of that was worship music. I was into a lot of worship music growing up. I grew up in student worship bands, and that was most of the music that I learned how to play and sing and then write from an early age was worship music. But whether it's pop music or jazz or R&B, or whether it's rock or metal or rap or what have you. Really just studying the things that make your favorite artists who they are and really characterize the uniqueness of their own creations. And then figuring out what kinds of things from that that you would want to adapt and adopt for your own purposes. 
So for me, I often like to start out with a good chord progression. I don't always even have a chord progression when I start because I'm usually a lyrics first writer. Some people are music first writers, but I'm often a lyrics first writer. So I'll start out with maybe a thought of something in my head, like a song starts, and I'll maybe come up with a couple words and I'll just start singing a melody with those words. Usually in the verses, it'll start out pretty chill and then the chorus, will often take like an interval up, like a third up from in that key, whatever the chords are, like you would go maybe an interval up. So, and then even the bridge could get even higher. So like using dynamics to figure out, oh, I don't want this melody to sound exactly the same throughout the whole song. I wanted to have some variations. In school, I had a songwriting class for harmony. They had this idea of organizing your variations, like putting it on a chalkboard or on a whiteboard and just being like, okay, here's the first chord progression that I have, and here's a way that I could vary it just slightly. So it'd be like A, B, right? And then I'll play that first one again, and then I'll play the variation again. Or instead of going A, B, A, B, like original variation, original variation, I might go original, variation one, original again, variation two, or whatever that is, like you could do that with your melodies, you could do that with your chords, um, but focusing on melodies, I really like to have in a verse, I might have like a melody that repeats until it changes at the very end of the verse to transition into the pre-chorus or the chorus. And then the chorus might start a third higher or like move up a little bit higher in the melody in that scale of the key that you're in. And then it might come back down, it might move back up, but you gotta have some sort of variation in dynamics to make a really good melody. I like to think sometimes of creative intervals. Like sometimes, one of my favorite intervals is a major seven. Like, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, mm, 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 major seventh, or major sixth, perfect fifth. I really like finding things within that zone. I don't know. <laughs> It's really just whatever sounds good to you and then figuring out the science behind it. Like observe the things that you like, figure out how they happen and what the science and the theory is behind it, figure out how to replicate it and then make it your own. So anyway, <clears throat> the fourth tip that I have for successful songwriting is knowing the function of song sections. And this to me is huge. Like I can't think of anything that I rant about more frequently in co-writes than this. So in your typical pop song, R&B song, worship song, there's a pretty standard or predictable version of how the order of the song usually goes, right? And so for worship songs, I've observed in particular that worship songs often go intro, verse one, verse one, second half. Chorus one, verse two, which is usually half as long. Chorus two, they might repeat the chorus and then go into a bridge where they'll start out low, repeat it three or four times, building all the way up to the top, go back to the chorus. And if they're chill, they might have an outro to the end, or if they're not, then they might go bridge, chorus, bridge, chorus, bridge, chorus, bridge, chorus, over and over again until they end, right? So pop songs often do verse, chorus or hook, verse, chorus or hook, bridge, chorus again and they're done, right? Now, some folk songs might go verse hook, verse hook, verse hook, and be done. So just observing the things that are typical for the genre that you're entering into, and then realizing the purpose of each of those sections. The way that I like to interpret it, and the way that I've studied and heard a lot of different people say it, is that verse one is almost like your introduction. So I like to think of songs when I'm writing them and song sections when I'm writing them as if they're an essay. Let's pretend we're in English comp for a second. Verse one is your introduction. It's your introducing the topic, saying this is kind of the emotion I'm feeling. This is kind of the thought that I'm having. We're kind of getting started and dipping our toe in the water into what the topic is that we're actually gonna talk about. If you have a pre-chorus, then that would kind of move the end of your verse one into the chorus. So it would just kind of introduce, okay, here's where we're going. And the chorus is your thesis statement. The chorus is the thing that you're gonna repeat throughout the whole song because the chorus is the focal point. So that's the thing that you want to be the most clear and concise. Melody-wise, you want it to be catchy. You want it to be something that people will remember. And lyric-wise, you want it to be clear. You want them to know what you're trying to say. So your chorus is your 
thesis statement. So then verse two is kind of like your elaborating paragraph, like it's your context. It's going deeper, diving deeper into the topic that you're talking about. And for me, I love a good second verse. I really get frustrated when people miss out on the opportunity to make a really excellent second verse. Because a lot of worship songs that I hear, I often notice that people will just make the second verse. They're like, oh, oops, we have to make this section. So let's just put some random words in it. That'll sound good. And that will rhyme and that will fill the space. And then we'll move on to the chorus again. But I love a good, rich, contextualized, deep diving second verse. The melody can vary just a little bit. It can do some different things. Like you can have some fun riffs. So then you have your chorus two, which is repeating of the chorus one, right? You might have some slightly different chords in that progression, but it's really gonna stay pretty much the same. And then your bridge. Okay, bridges can be the most exciting part of the song because your bridge is basically your conclusion. So it's drawing you back to the point of the thesis statement, but kind of saying it in a different way and making it bolder and brighter, putting a different spin on it or a different perspective on it. And then when you go back to the course, it's like, oh wow, okay, great, that made perfect sense. And to me, like in worship songs, bridges can be one of the most exciting parts. I really enjoy writing a good bridge. I hope that that kind of helps put into perspective the purpose behind why we make the things that we do. If you have a different idea of it, please let me know in the comments because I love different perspectives on songwriting. I just love helping people grow. And to me, clarity is everything. Because if you just sit down and you're just kind of like meandering your way around, you're like playing something or you're singing something and you, you keep going, as long as you get to the finish point, you've accomplished something. But to me, if you're gonna do this on a professional level or if you're gonna do this over and over again and you wanna get really good at it as a craft, knowing the purpose of each thing that you're going to create and being intentional with your perspective, with your details and your fine tuning will help you come out at the end with the result that you wanted or with something even more exciting, to be honest. Sometimes it's way more exciting and fun than you thought it was gonna be when you get started. So my last step or my last tip for writing successful songs is knowing the function of chords. So for a lot of people in this day and age and in the music industry today, when you go to write songs or you go to communicate a song that you've written, unless it's like an orchestra piece or a classical piano piece or just like super crazy detailed, you're most likely gonna be using chords. And so knowing the Nashville number system, knowing how to work your way around a major scale, a minor scale, a pentatonic scale, a blue scale, and even the modes. Oh my gosh, Berkeley has taught me so much about the modes. When I get to writing and I start doing something creative, like pulling chords in from outside the key, changing the key color of a song in the middle of it, like changing from a major key to a minor key or changing from major to a Dorian mode in the middle of a song, it gets so exciting. Just learning how to connect the dots and make the kind of sounds that you want by knowing the music theory behind it is so much fun to me. So knowing how to play chords, knowing how to play inversions, how to play scales, and work your way around making good music with chords and creating riffs on top of those chords, and even harmonies, like on top of the melodies that you're writing, like can really broaden your world and give you a lot more options. I honestly did not develop a love for music theory until I went to college and like growing up, I was the kid that was playing everything by ear. I was singing everything by ear, learning all the harmonies, picking up instruments, asking people for advice. But I really struggled with music theory, with taking lessons, like with following instructions, that kind of thing. I really just wanted to do it on my own. So that's why I'm kind of making these videos like to encourage my younger self in a way that music theory is so exciting. I freaking love music theory. It's definitely a special interest for me right now because the more I learn about it, the more the things that I know instinctually make sense and the more language that I have to express those things to other musicians when I want to collaborate. And that can be world changing, life changing, to have the language for the things that you want to do and to have methods in place that you're like, oh, I could try this, I could try this. Instead of just like playing around hearing a bunch of things that sound bad and eventually hearing something that sounds decent that you like. So I would definitely say knowing chords, knowing music theory, and at least enough music theory to understand the major scale and the circle of fists so that you can play chords. Like your basic start, whole, whole, half, whole. 
four for a minor chord, start whole, half whole whole. Just start there, you gotta start somewhere. And knowing chords is a great place to start if you wanna get into writing songs. Anyway, I probably went on like 50 different rants, but that was a lot of fun for me to talk about because this is one of my favorite topics. So if you have any questions or any comments or any different perspectives on those type of things, if you are like a musician that knows way more than me, please comment, please engage with this video because I would love to build a community on this channel around growing together and writing together and creating together, building the passions and the desires and dreams that God's put in our hearts. If music theory is your special interest too, please comment below. Or if songwriting is something that you love, please comment. Anyway, if you made it this far in the video, thanks for watching. I am so excited to have you here. And I hope that you'll follow along with me on this journey in the future. So thanks so much. Thanks